men need to understand what their own value is and power, not to spite women, not to try and get one up on them. It's not a competition, but to actually reassert, this is my value as a man. This is my worth as a man. This is my power as a man. Do you think this has been painted on men because men have been uh, told from a very early age and from uh, early times of civilization that we are the primary sacrificer of life? So it positions us that when we get to, let's say, manhood or adulthood, we've converted to being able to enjoy life to being the martyr for life. Do you think that's kind of carried forward and that's what we're experiencing with men having that mindset that you were just referring to? Yeah, I think in some ways that, you know, that plays into it. Um, I think from an evolutionary standpoint, we we have, you know, men and the male part of our species and the male part of most species plays a very specific role that comes along with a certain responsibility. I mean, you look at I, I just watched this interesting documentary called Chimp Empire. I don't know if you've oh, seen it on dude, Netflix. Didn't but Joe Rogan it, just talk about this? Yeah, he had the he had the director, I think, uh, on the show. But it's very interesting because it shows the role that the male chimps within the culture and the society actually play in terms of, you know, protecting the borders and being able to hunt food and a whole number of things. And I think from from an evolutionary standpoint, we've, you know, we've evolved similarly. If you look at our, our history as human beings, men have historically played a specific role and that role has come along with certain burdens and certain responsibilities in terms of protecting, in terms of providing. I think in our modern culture, that's shifted quite a bit, but I do think that the, the sort of innate expectations are still rooted and embedded into us you know we still expect ourselves as men to be those providers to be those protectors and there's nothing inherently wrong with that you know um i want to protect my family you know if somebody came into my house i would protect my family um i also want to provide for my family and i don't think that there's anything wrong with that per se but we can we can make it so much of our identity that that's that's like only who we are. You know, like I've worked with some men where their ability to provide was such a huge part of their identity that anytime it got threatened, they would either go on the attack or turn into a completely different person. You know, so I, I do think that it's, I, I do think that culturally it's very baked into, yeah, you're only as good of a man as you could be based on how well you're able to especially provide. And I think that there's a number of reasons for that. Yeah. I, and I agree with you. I think that those were definitely, I mean, they're still within us. I mean, it's thousands of years of evolution that that's been really the bread and butter and men have been held accountable to it. And what I've seen is that a lot of guys still carry, um, because inherently with that becomes the, the ability to, uh, almost have disregard for your life and your happiness, right? Cause you have it, it, ancestrally, you had to be willing to give it all up. Like that was kind of what it is. Now, obviously, with civilization, we've transitioned significantly in that role of of what the cost really is. But I think that that mindset of sacrifice and, and what I like to refer to as martyrdom is is still there because I, we're seeing, in my opinion, we're seeing men disregard their happiness. We're seeing men, like you said, your client, like completely sacrificing anything that causes enjoyment for him based on this function that we believe is is uh, still this role of of men within society. Right. And that's kind of where I was looking at that, like, wow, man, this is, this is something that I think has to be more of an open conversation for us men. And so my next, my next question is kind of like, do you see this at, as kind of this precipice um, with unprecedented times, the access to social media, access to large global community, all of these things, um, the safety of civilization, do you see this as a precipice for evolution for, for masculinity in general and men? Um, and then I'll have a follow-up question. Well, that's a, that's a big ass question, brother. <laughs> I know it's a, it's a really big question. So I was like, let me just let Connor sit with that one for a second. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you know, look, if you look at the data, 42% of American households, women are the breadwinner, right? right. So women are out earning men in 42% of American households. That's huge. 
That's no a one's huge fucking change. talking about that, right? No one's talking about the fact that the majority, almost half of American households, women are out earning their male counterparts, but we're still espousing this notion. And of course they are, right? I mean, women are out graduating men colleges um, by a lot. It's, it's actually flipped. So when you looked at, this is just a little side tangent, I'll come back to your question. In 1960, 40, I think it was 39 to 41% of college graduates were women. And today, 41% of college, college graduates are men. So it's actually flipped. It's actually reversed. And so, you know, in the 1960s, we, we you know, we, I, think, I think it was in the 1960s, I can't remember the exact date, but we passed Title IX to make sure that, you know, women could go to college and, and, uh, and to ensure that they had certain advantages in getting into those colleges so that they could get their bachelor's and master's degrees and head out into the workforce, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And today, you know, you have less men going to college than ever before and, and interested in college. And there's a huge conversation about why that is. I mean, if I was 19 years old and I looked at college campuses today, I probably wouldn't feel yeah. very incentivized to go there. Likewise. Uh, but, you know, that's, that's a different conversation. Um, and so, yeah, you know, I think when you, when you look at all of the shifts and changes that have happened, I think it's very disorienting for most men. And what I see is a lot of men, there's sort of this split happening in the sense that there's a lot of men that are trying to go back and cling on to and hold on to sort of older values of masculinity, right? It's just like, well, these are simple tenets and these are simple principles and I can hold on to these. And, and if I hold on to these hard enough, then that'll give me some direction. And then there's another large group of men who are just like, I don't know, I'm just lost entirely, <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, you know, they don't know, how to def they don't know how to define masculinity. They don't know what it means to be a man. It's just sort of rudderless and, and not there. And then I think that there's a, there's a smaller group of men who, like yourself, and there's a ton of organizations that are out there that are trying to carve out this middle way of okay, maybe we don't need to hold on to all of these really archaic, you know, ways of being a man. Some of them are good. Some of them we can keep, some of them we hold on to, but some of them aren't going to apply in today's world. You know, if you are a man who's making 150K and you fall in love with a woman who's making a million bucks a year and your primary value as a man is on being a provider, but you've fallen in love with a woman who's, you know, just crushing it, at, at, you know, in her business or whatever. What do you do? Yeah. You know, what do you do? Are you less of a man all of a sudden because this, this woman is, is like crushing it? Really? Like, really? Are you less of a man? Like, I think it's such an interesting debate and conversation to have. And so, and, and I think it's only going to get uh, more pronounced, not worse. I don't think it's a worse conversation, but more pronounced as we enter into AI and we see artificial intelligence enter into our education system and we see artificial intelligence enter into our financial system and our social media systems and our political systems. So, you know, I, I do think that we are on this, on this um, precipice, is the word you use, where You as a man listening to this and me as a man saying this really have to sit for a period of time and without a lot of external noise, start to decide and discern what it really means to be a man at our core. Without all of the media garbage without all the political polarization, nonsense, without any of that crap, to just do what we as men have always done, which is one, go off into the wilderness by our damn selves and sit for days with the bears and the lakes and the birds and the deer and to think and to feel and to experience and to be. And then to do that with other men, 
to go and be with other men and do do things with other men that aren't simply about building a company or a business or competing in a sport, but actually being with other men in the ways that we've always been traveling, adventuring, maybe building something, right? But out in nature. And so I think the more that we can do that, the more we'll have some kind of a connection at our depths of who we are as men. You know, we've we've systematically extracted initiation, initiatory experiences from our culture in the West. And men have suffered exponentially at the hands of that. A lot of men are in their 30s, 40s, 50s, 60s, and they've never experienced any kind of, of initiation into, into manhood. And so there's a very big question mark that looms over most men's head of how do I even know that I am not, I am a man, but that I'm maybe man enough, that I'm a man that I respect, that I'm a man that I can appreciate, and that I'm a man that has not only value to offer other people, but that I'm a man that is contributing to the people around me. Because that's a huge part of what initiation was ultimately meant to do. Of course, it was meant to confront you. Of course, initiation was meant to have you be confronted by pain and be overpowered and overwhelmed by something. There's a great quote by Richard Rohr where he says that unless a man experiences or has an experience of powerlessness, he will always abuse power. Right? He will always abuse power. And so, you know, when we take that away from young boys, when we take away this experience of some type of initiatory experience, what we take away from him is the understanding and the knowledge unequivocally internally that he's able to be with his own power, that he's able to wield power in a meaningful way. And that's detrimental. And so I think a lot of men are trying to grapple and reconcile with their own power and in a time and an era where more and more in the future, women are going to gain more power, they're going to gain more money, they're going to gain more access, they're going to become more prominent in political systems and businesses and et cetera. Men need to understand what their own value is and power, not to spite women, <laughs> not to try and get one up on them. It's not a competition, but to actually reassert this is my value as a man. This is my worth as a man. This is my power as a man.